Good morning. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, you know, it's not in my nature to poke fun at other people's typos. But every now and then something shows up in the comments that is just too funny, at least too funny for me. So, Jonathan, please know that I am laughing with you and not at you when you say, Good morning from Emiliano Zapato, which means Emiliano Shoe. And I thought it was really funny, but maybe it's because I'm in a good mood. Again, no harm intended, but that was the funniest typo that I've seen in a long time. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, where we keep things civilized by laughing with each other, not at each other, where we share news and headlines about what's going on in Puerto Vallarta, in our state, Jalisco, in our country, Mexico, about what you guys are up to, what your questions are, how you're figuring out your RFC numbers and all the requirements that the government has expected of you lately. And trust me, they're expecting a lot of things from Mexican nationals as well. So we are struggling as much as you are. Anyhow, this is what we do, and today on June 7 is no exception. It is a pleasure to get together with you and to connect as much as we can. As always, if you have um, important questions that you wish to share with us, it helps a great deal if you add a letter Q, a capital letter Q at the beginning of your comment. And if you are joining us live for the first time or you would like to come out of uh, the, the group of... Um, what do we call it? The, the people that don't participate, the, the very important people that don't participate. If you'd like to say hello and you'd like to let us know that you are new to the broadcast, just write the word new and we will be so very happy to give you a proper welcome. As always, we're going to go through our news and then we'll take a look at all your comments and your questions in the second half of the broadcast. Today we have interesting news and important news about... Um, about COVID and the filming that's going on in uh, Marina Vallarta. And I found a fascinating video that I want to share with you. Well, I have two interesting videos that I want to share with you. In one of them, Amy Armstrong. You know Amy Armstrong, the singer, um, the vocalist? She is a science fiction character now, believe it or not. And we'll tell you where and when to check it out. But first, let us take a look at some of our headlines. A new COVID test site is expected to be set up at Parque Hidalgo this week. According to health authorities, the module will be open as of today and continue offering free COVID-19 testing until Friday. And this goes on from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. This is... Um, the health department saying, well, we know that the cases are increasing, not a lot, but we want to be safe rather than sorry. So um, again, the latest increase in COVID cases is no cause for alarm, according to our governor. 
health authorities are choosing to play it safe. So it's good to know that we have another place where people can get free COVID tests if necessary. Moving right along, this is rather amazing. According to this news note, 1,025 commercial flights will land at Puerto Vallarta's International Airport in the first two weeks of this month alone. That's around 73 flights a day. And when you consider that the airport is not operating 24 hours, that's a lot of flights. Um, it also represents an increment of about of almost 400% when compared to last year's numbers, which is completely understandable. But even so, it is good to see the demand for flights to our city be that strong, even in the summer months. And of course, summer means rain. And wherever you look, particularly if it is a place near a water canal, city workers continue racing against time, ensuring that as many preventive measures as possible can be put into place before it starts raining with gusto. This time around in this photograph, we can see workers cleaning and strengthening canals in Colonia El Pedregal. Similar work continues in the canal in La Vena, which is my own neighborhood. And of course, along the Rio Cuale, where there is still quite a bit of debris to be removed from the, uh, from the river. So, as soon as Mexico President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador publicly declined the invitation to the America Summit, the grumbling began, both from his critics, but also from the Senate, where his opposition insists that attending is a responsibility of the president and that by not attending, he appears to be more a president of ideology and not the president that Mexico needs. Um, why? Because... Our president decided not to go. If not, all countries were invited. There are a couple of unruly countries in the continent that were not invited. And um, uh, Lopez Obrador chose to stand behind them and not to attend himself. Of course, nothing horrible will happen because we will be represented by Foreign Chancellor uh, Marcelo Ebrard. Uh, but can we estimate if there's going to be some damages if President López Obrador doesn't attend? Actually, I don't think so. But why do I know? You know, I'm not a politics expert, and of course, we're not invited to the party. And uh, it's just a matter of time to see what's going to happen afterwards. President López Obrador has intention to visit um, U.S. President Joe Biden later on this summer. We don't know if he'll get an appointment or not, but Time will tell. Let us take a quick look at our weather forecast and then we'll continue with some more interesting news. Oh my goodness, I left everything open in the background, <laughs> which shouldn't concern you. But every now and then when my apps start uh, updating the, themselves automatically, that's when we get unexpected lags. Let us hope that that will not be the case today. 25 degrees. Again, we are at 100% humidity. The good news is that this is as humid as it's going to get if we go by the numbers. Our temperature right now is 77 degrees and our weather forecast says, <laughs> like a broken record, humid and mostly cloudy through the day with a high of 29 and a low of 23. Tomorrow, same thing with a high of 29 and a low of 24. And Thursday, same thing with a high of 29 and a low of 24. Summer, of course, is here to stay. And now, yesterday, we shared news about this series that is being filmed um, around Marina Vallarta by Mexican actor Eugenio Derbez. And today we learned that some streets will be closed to traffic due to the production schedule. So, if you're planning on driving through or around Marina Vallarta this week, you may want to take a closer look at this article. This is, of course, for the second season of Acapulco, a TV series available through Apple, um, Apple TV. Derbez, the actor, Eugenio Derbez, is riding a wave of success right now after his participation in the Academy Award winning film Coda. And at the same time, he is in the eye of the storm as it relates to Mexico's Maya train project, which has ruffled the feathers of many environmental groups because they claim that the project is not environmentally sound. Of course, 
this is uh, President López Obrador's big, big, big project and legacy for his presidential term. And um, Derbez, the actor, has been very critical of the president and they've traded uh, comments publicly, not in person, but they have uh, been in each other's press conferences, shall we say. Uh, moving right along, I want to let you know that the third edition of the Young Entrepreneur Market is coming in July. This is a public market that is sponsored by the city in which the city gives the opportunity to young business people to present their products and their ideas to those of us that enjoy a nice outdoor market. Um, we don't know when the next market is actually going to take place, but we do know through this article that those interested in participating have until this Friday to sign up. All the information and the requirements are located in this article. So if you know of a young entrepreneur that is between the ages of 15 and 33 years of age, that is interested in selling their stuff, their products, their chingaderas, their good stuff, um, at this market, all the information is located here. There's a web address that you can look at so that you can uh, sign them up or they can sign them up or whatever. Now, oh my God, how do we get into this? Well, I'm just going to tell you, we love mariachi music. We love folk music. And just as in the case of symphony music, classical music, uh, there is something to be said about the music being performed in modern with modern instruments, and then there is something to be said about music, music being performed with period instruments. It sounds slightly different. You know, for example, a Beethoven symphony, there are orchestras that will play the symphonies, and re there are recordings of the symphonies with modern instruments, and have a very characteristic, characteristic sound. But then there are other orchestras, for example, like the Orchestra of the Enlightenment, that only uses instruments from the period in which the music was composed. And the music has a slightly different tone to it um, or a different flavor. It's, you know, I, I'm not going to get into specifics because that's not what we're here for. What am I bringing this up for? Because, you know, there is such a thing as traditional mariachi uh, and modern mariachi. You know, mari modern mariachi is played with modern instruments. Traditional mariachi is played with more authentic handcrafted instruments. And there is a traditional mariachi music a group in Guadalajara called Los Pitalleros, and I follow them because of their affinity for traditional Mexican music performed with traditional instruments. Well, on their Facebook page, and I'm getting to the meat of the potatoes here, uh, the meat and the potatoes, I'm getting to the gist of it <laughs> very slowly, because here we are seeing three young musicians from Uganda, from Eastern Uganda in Africa. And they're playing traditional folk music from their homeland using traditional African instruments. And it is fascinating to see and listen to this music because the similarities between this music and traditional Mexican folk music, particularly the Son of Veracruz, are very, very clear to appreciate. And I, I'm going to invite you to listen to it. I was totally blown away by this yesterday because, you know... As much as we talked about the difference in instruments, there's also th something to be said about the historic heritage that we have from Africa, given the fact that the Spaniards brought African slaves to America and these slaves brought with them their own musical traditions. So listening to this video and watching this video today truly, truly helped me appreciate um, the, the link and the relationship between this music and people that came to our country from Africa uh, centuries ago. Anyhow, moving right along, I want to let you know that I am not the only person in town uh, with the crazy habit of crocheting. In fact, there are quite a few people in town that uh, enjoy playing with yarn. And there is such a thing as a group called PV Yarn Benders. This is a group that presently has 53 members that get together and, um, and they play with yarn together. Some people may crochet, other people may knit, other people may play bondage sports. I don't know. 
I am a member. I've never attended any of the gatherings that the group has because unfortunately they happen in during the morning at the same time in which I am broadcasting. So it's difficult for me to break free from my commitment to you. But should you be a hooker in the best possible sense, if you hook with a crochet hook and you are a hooker, yes, that's what we call ourselves. Uh, or if you love bending yarn, I'm going to leave you with the, the address, the, the URL for this Facebook group. It's um, a private group. You can apply to join. And it is, um, it, I also want to let you know that their next get together is this coming Thursday. Now, I don't feel comfortable letting you know where and where because it is a private group after all. But if you want to um, go ahead and play with yarn along with a bunch of jolly locals that enjoy doing the same thing, there's going to their next gathering is going to be this coming Thursday. And what else do we have? Oh, yes. So I got a nice little chat from Amy Armstrong. You know Amy. Um, Amy is uh, locally based glorious singer with a glorious voice she has taken to working quite extensively with Fernando Gonzalez, a crazy and wonderful guitar player here in town. And Amy told me that she has just finished participation in an animated science fiction um, program in which she plays a cookie scientist with a German accent. And there she is. She is not only lending her voice, but, and I'm not an expert on these things, it's clear for me to see that this, um, this project was done using motion capture. A lot of times when you see animated films, the way the characters are animated is they have the actual people wearing green suits, and when people move, in their film, the computer translates those movements into an actual animated character. At least that's what I know about this type of, of filmmaking. So not only is um, Amy Armstrong's character larger than life, her voice is larger than life, and somehow, and I need to, we need to sit down with Amy and find out exactly how this collaboration came up with, uh, happened rather, because the, the sight of Amy Armstrong covered in a green suit just makes me giggle. And I hope if that is the way this was done, I really hope that they, this is well documented through still photographs that were done behind the scenes on the project. And I think this is, um, yes, this is pretty much what we have for today. Let us now take a quick look. I will leave you with a parting thought later on about Amy and her wonderful musicianship. Uh, but first, let us take a quick look at your comments just to see what everybody is up to. I love the good mornings from Minnesota, from, um, we don't know from where, from Karen. We love good mornings from the Ozarks. Thank you very much, Sherry. Always a pleasure. Um, let's see what else we have. And of course, Jonathan, who says good morning from Emiliano Zapato. I love it. I love it. I think I'm going to use that one. Uh, let's see what else. Mary is happy finally watching live instead of a day later. It is a pleasure to have you, Mary. I hope you're drinking good coffee or whatever floats your boat. Um, let's see what else we have. Maggie, Maggie as in Peggy. I hope things are good COVID wise at your end. I hope your, your, your housemate is completely free of the virus. I hope you were able to survive living with a person with COVID without any major incident um, because that I was, I was worried about that. Let's see what else we have. Ooh, Raymond sends salutations from Conchas Chinas. Um, let's see. Oh, how fun. Rita is in the in the mountain, those mountains, I don't know where the accent goes in the word that starts with P. I don't know if it's Pocono or Pocono or Pocono, but I know that there are mountains called that in Pennsylvania. And Rita has been visited by fox, deer, a rabbit, and a bear. Yay, wildlife. I love it. Um, 
Kate says, I look bright and wonderful in orange. I love orange. Orange and green are my favorite colors. If you look around me, everything in the house is either orange or green for the most part. Um, great colors. Uh, let's see what else we have. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Fernando says, good morning, guys, from the best place. I mean, Mexico City. What's up? Mexico City is a great place indeed. Uh, bam, bam, ba, dam, ba, dam, bam, bam. Angelica uh, chimes in on, on the issue about our president. According to the news, the United States did not invite Nicaragua, Cuba, and Venezuela because they have dictators for government. Yes. Um, let's see. When listening to music, it's like the difference between vinyl and CDs, says Bill. Um, I wonder if you are referring to the choice of using period instruments versus um, versus current instruments, but I find your comment very, very interesting. Uh, as interesting as all the co brief but interesting conversations we've had when we cross paths. I know that Bill and his wife are uh, taking off to the United States for some personal issues that need to be resolved, and I think um, you're going to travel with my thoughts and my prayers with you, and I hope things go well up north. Um, <laughs> Kathleen says, I'm not a hooker, but thanks for the info. I love it. Um, I am a hooker. I really am. I'm surrounded by yarn now, and I love it. Do, 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 Kathleen says, love this news about Amy. How exciting. FYI, movies, Top Gun 2, big thumbs up at La Isla, 36 years since the first one. You know, oh, I think I'm going to go see it this Friday. I think I accepted a date with some friends. Tom Cruise, you know, there are two films that are heavenly. There is Minority Report, which, of course, was directed by Steven Spielberg, Spielberg and it has gorgeous music by John Williams, and Oblivion. Those are my two films in which I enjoy uh, Tom Cruise. Some of the Mission Impossible films, definitely. Top Gun 2, I'm not so crazy about it, but I'm going to go. I'm definitely going to go for the spectacle. I think it's going to be fun. Let's see what else. Patty says, I will miss tomorrow's show going for my temporary resident card. Bravo. Bravo. And as I was mentioning earlier, some of you have been grumbling about the fact that you're expected to go get some new paperwork and numbers from the government. Well, just know that it is also happening to us Mexican nationals. We're having to do an update on our papers as they relate to uh, our tax service uh, here in Mexico. And of course, it is a pain to have to deal with these things. It is what the government puts forth. And what are we to do other than to comply? So, if you're getting testy or frustrated or think it's only happening to you because you're not Mexican, please know that we are going through our share of stuff as well. Um, uh, Emiliano Zapato is what I call one of my, my dog's toys. Yes, it looks like a shoe. I love it. I love it. Ah, great. An update from Meggie. My housemate is doing great, and I somehow didn't catch COVID from her despite being exposed. Thank you for cheering me along through your through throughout my quarantine. This virus is so random. I know, and I continue to be fortunate enough that it hasn't caught up with me, and I hope that continues to be the case. Ramon went to see Top Gun. I love the intro. It's a fun movie. Thank you very much for that. Um, Kathleen adds, the story of Top Gun 2 is not great. The flying is awesome on a big screen. So fun to see Val Kilmer in it. Those two from the original. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate those comments. As you know, I mentioned last week that I have been busy, um, with myself, not in post, but one of my summer projects is to watch. I found a list of all the Marvel movies and how they should be watched despite the uh, regardless of the year which they were produced so that you can actually understand the Marvel timeline. So I am now 
four films into a list of about 35 films and television series. And, um, and I'm enjoying the ride. I posted the link of where I found the list last week. If you'd like to see that link in the show notes, again, just write the word Marvel in your comments and I will be happy to share. <clears throat> and I think we're getting close to the end. So I would like to share a parting thought that occurred to me this morning because not only did Amy Armstrong share with me knowledge of this science fiction quirky comedy video that I watched and it was quirky but it was funny too and watching Amy do all these voice accents was absolutely fun. Amy is presently in Provincetown. She is touring her duo uh, show with um, Fernando Gonzalez. They are performing at Provincetown's Pilgrim House. Uh, and this is what occurred to me. The government of Jalisco plays, pays a fortune to people like race car driver Checo Perez to promote our destination abroad. So Checo Perez has the name Jalisco inscribed, I think, on his helmet, and he received millions and millions of pesos for that. Now, does he go around talking about Jalisco in his press conferences, or does he just ride his car? I don't know. But people like Amy, who is not from here, but lives here, she considers Puerto Vallarta her home, and Fernando, her guitarist, is from here. You know, they go around the world. And I've seen Amy live. She tells stories. She's a singer, but she's also a storyteller. And of course, she tells stories about the life we live here in Puerto Vallarta. And somehow it occurred to me that Amy probably goes a lot further in promoting our city through her music and her stories than someone like Checo Perez, the race car driver that simply puts the logo and the word Jalisco on his helmet. So next time I see Amy, and I'm looking forward to connecting with her and Fernando when they come back from uh, their tour, in the United States, I will say thank you. And I strongly invite you, if you know Amy or you go listen to her concerts, to say thank you to Amy and Fernando because somehow my hunch tells me that they do a lot more about telling a positive story for Puerto Vallarta than a race car driver. Today, as always, I want to thank you for your support. And I want to thank you for all your comments and your questions. And I'm going to leave you with a little short video that Amy shared with me that I think is very applicable for all of us. Have a great day, and I hope to see you again soon. You're simply the best. You're better. Baby, I would rather be